Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Craft and Business of Books with me, Tatiana Denford. Marissa Hussey can't join me today because she's still on maternity leave. So I will be going through all the tools, the tricks, the stumbling blocks to the writing process and everything in between, just so everyone is aware of how tricky it is to get your book on a shelf. Um, we are on every Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern, so make sure to click the link below to subscribe to be alerted ahead of every episode. So today we're talking about writing and publishing a lot of people's favorite, which is honest parenthood with a lot of humor thrown in. Um, it seems that in the last eight years or so, parenthood has really gotten brave with its real depictions and honesty about what it's like to be a parent. I mean, for me personally, um, it's been really fun to watch that evolution because personally, I found the early years really tricky and really hard. Um, and now it just seems like we are not held up to these expectations. So if you decide to be a parent, you don't feel like you have to outperform the other person with the toys that the kids play with or the things that they're watching or not watching on screens. And you're not feeling guilty about all the crying and the shouting. And I'm talking about the parents, not the children. Um, you know, so when we managed to get today's author on, I really got excited because I wanted to lift the veil on how the industry sees this particular genre and what it's like to write and submit that kind of manuscript. Because there's a lot of real life that's thrown in there. So, um, and I also am curious to see what the future looks like for authors that tackle that kind of massive audience. For Marissa, actually, what's interesting is that early on in her career, she actually worked on books like um, What to Expect When You're Expecting. And then um, also she started working on really serious books about parenting. And, and it was very focused on the children and what to do with them and how to raise them. But it never really focused on what's happening in your brain and how you're responding to the chaos. So, and then suddenly, slowly we started seeing a hashtag crop up uh, that was reasons my toddler is crying. Um, and that came into our view. And then suddenly Twitter accounts turned into books like The Honest Toddler. And even the straight laced books took a turn to a more modern approach to parenting like Emily Oster's Expecting Better. Um, so from the publishing side, I think what we, what Marissa actually found really interesting is that in that space, suddenly there became a lot of humor and that humor became a place where we could really lean on to communicate what this was all like. Um, and we're talking a lot about things that used to be brushed under the rug, and now it's becoming a lot more acceptable. And it's really freeing, from my experience anyway, um, and probably from a lot of people's. Um, and what's curious is that the publishing industry moves so fast that now you're seeing a little bit more of the mindful parenting uh, books come up again. So. Um, and like from a creative perspective, I'm interested to see, to see how a writer who's written a lot um, of pieces for a lot of different publications, how do you present a manuscript about parenthood um, and you do it in your own way? How do you present it to an agent where it's, you know, it's your take on it and how does your team then market it in a way that makes you feel like it's your story and your voice? So. Our guest today um, is Julie Vick. She is the author of the forthcoming humor book for introverted parents called Babies Don't Make Small Talk, So Why Should I? Which is a genius title. I love it so much. Um, it's due out in August 2021 from Countryman Press. Her writing has appeared in New Yorker Daily Shouts, Real Simple, Parents, McSweeney's, and The Washington Post. She's also an English instructor at the University of Colorado, Denver, like she has nothing else to do. She just adds to her plate. I don't know how she's doing all this stuff. So her writing life sounds anything but boring. So let me bring her on. Hello, Julie. Hi, thanks so much for having me. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's super exciting. So welcome. Thank um, you. So yeah, so let's, first of all, let's talk about your book um, that's coming out. and. How has that kind of process been in a year where it's a little bit 
chaos everywhere all the time. How does yeah. that <laughs> I know it has been a weird year. Um, yeah, it's been both like strange but good in some ways, I think. Um, so I my book was sold on proposals. So I had written a proposal for it um, and it was out on submission before everything kind of hit in March with lockdowns and stuff um, yeah. here in the US at least. And then, um, so I sort of didn't expect very much. It seemed like a lot of stuff was shut down and I thought nothing would really happen. Um, but then my agent called and said we had an offer, um, I think it was in April or May. So, um, so it was a really welcome surprise, but also um, strange timing because of, you know, my kids were home, school was remote. Um, I was teaching remotely, like everything, you know, like all of us, we were just trying to survive. So, um, so yeah, so we ended up, we accepted that offer and then it had a pretty tight deadline on writing um, the first draft. They wanted it in by mid August. Um, wow. Yeah, and I had a proposal, so I had a pretty good, at least roadmap for where it would go. Like it, we tweaked it a bit, added a few chapters and changed a few things, but um, I at least had a plan and I had some sample ch chapters written. So, um, so it, but it was like this, you know, over the summer, I just had a, I had a tight deadline and I had to get it done, um, which was both hard because, you know, I didn't have childcare and, um, you know, it was just a tough time in general with motivation, but like, I think just having, something else to focus on was sort of good too, because yeah. um, I had this deadline, I knew I had to meet it, and it just um, gave me something to kind of <laughs> keep my focus away from yeah. other things. So welcome um, to like this scrolling yeah. New York Times, yeah. Um, so, so yeah, it's been strange, but um, I feel like it's been good to have something to focus on and to um, look forward to the book coming out next year and just sort of work toward that sort of stuff. Yeah. And has your team been really patient with your kind of creative process? Because, you know, everybody's aware of how stressful kind of this year has been. So do they kind of give you leeway or do they do they kind of <laughs> knock on your window? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, they have been really patient. I mean, they're working from home um, and then a lot of them are parents as well. So they understand. Um, so they have. Um, and it, they have been. So we had a tight deadline in August because initially the initial talk was trying to get it out in May of 2021 around Mother's Day, um, but that ended up getting bumped to August, which right. is sort of good because we got a, a little extra breathing room. But yeah, they they've sort of been they've been really nice about it and been like, "This is what we're like. This is what we'd like to see, but we understand. Let you know, let us know if this isn't going to work date wise yeah. for uh, the initial draft and then the edits um, as well." So yeah, I think everybody has been great about understanding oh, that. that's good. And you know <laughs> yeah. what you're, you're really lucky and like you know lucky, having that kind of team mm -hmm. uh, probably really helpful for your mental yeah for sure yeah yeah now <laughs> yeah. Look, so let's go back and kind of talk about how how did this come about because we've all we've people have decided to have children have all been there they're like God, mm -hmm. I should write some of this down because it's absolute insanity um you know how how did you sit down and be like right i think i'm gonna put my own take on it i'm gonna write a julie vick book about you mm -hmm. know yeah for sure so after so i was writing before i had kids um but then I took some time off <laughs> when I had kids and then got back into it after um, my second was maybe around six months old is when I really started like focusing more on it again. Um, and I found that, you know, I started writing these short humor pieces partially because I could get them done in short chunks of time. And that's what I had. Um, and I found that it was a good way to sort of process some <laughs> frustrations and things. Yeah. Um, so, and then they, they did really well. So I found that I, like, I enjoyed them and other people seem to enjoy them. Um, and so I wrote the short pieces for a while and then, you know, long-term goal has always been to write a book. Um, and I just, um, thought about, you know, ideas in that space because with nonfiction, um, you know, the platform is the big thing now having some, um, some reach or writing or publications in the space you're writing in. Um, so I was thinking about different things in that, in the parenting space that maybe hadn't been done and um, that I would have liked to read if, if, um, if I were the reader. So um, yeah, I just thought about the introvert angle is something that probably 
that I hadn't really seen um, in this particular exact way. Um, and I thought it could be good for other people too. And did you, did you know, because that title, and I, and I say this not just to, to make you feel good, but that title is so <laughs> original. Yeah. Because it's, it's so apt. How did you, how did you come up with that? Was it always you know, sitting there? Yeah, no, I, that's great. That's good to hear because the title was sort of like a, I went through 5 million titles and we, um, we didn't, so the, we didn't, the proposal had a different title. Um, the original, the title when we submitted it was how to deal with never being alone, um, which I think was like got at the introvert thing, but not necessarily the parent yeah. thing. It was a little more vague, right? Yeah. Um, so then my editor is the one that actually suggested that title based on some stuff that was in the proposal. I think she pulled, pulled some, um, you know, some phrasing from it and yeah. was like, what about this? And we went through um, a bunch of different, you know, a title feels like such a huge thing. So I brainstormed a bunch of different titles, um, some of which have turned into chapter titles. So um, I feel like it's like had some use in both ways, but that was the one that we came back to. I asked some, you know, I went, I went through, had a list and asked some friends what they preferred, not saying, you know, which one I'd yeah. come up with or whatever. And um, that one just seemed to like en encapsulate what we wanted, you know, you know like explaining right. like introversion and parenthood um, and humor, hopefully. So it yes. seemed like it was just like a good way to capture it all. And it also, it's so evocative. Uh -huh. It's not, I don't know how to explain it. It's just, it's a title that's not really in your face, but explains a lot. It, it not mm -hmm. only talks about it kind of hints at the introversion and kind of the the subject matter, but also, you know, it makes it separates itself from so many other other parenting books that kind of push you into that space when you really don't necessarily want to be. Like, and you you know, you're you're catering, catering you know, for people who are saying, yeah, but I I don't want to go to baby groups. I I don't want to be friends with you just because my kids are friends. I was never, right. I was never a fan of the baby groups. Like the, yeah. coffee, the, the tea, the coffee mornings with babies. I'm like, right. I, I cannot drink coffee when one eye is like <laughs> over there with my kids. Yeah. And I'm sitting here going, oh, that was nice. <laughs> I yeah. know. And it's so like, I think like definitely for me, and I think it sounds like, you know, for others too, it's like, it's just hard. Like you're trying to figure out how to parent and then you're feeling like sort of like everyone's watching how you're doing things and are you doing it the right way? And, you know, like situations where you don't know people and you're also kind of like socially anxious. So yeah, it's just like a lot to be thrown into those situations. Yeah. So what, when you were writing these little pieces mm -hmm. um, that ended up, kind of being turned into a book. Mm -hmm. What kind of, now it sounds like a silly question because I was going to say, what, what, where did you get the inspiration? Like, what are the moments? <laughs> but, but it's like constant, you know, mm -hmm. There's material always. But right. where did you kind of, wh where are the moments that you remember most where you sat down and be like, oh my God, this is so great. I have to kind of remember this because it not only helps me, but it help, might help somebody else. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's funny because like, I think I sort of mentioned this before, but like a lot of times ideas for humor pieces come out of frustration. So, yeah. you know, if I'm feeling like if you, ha if I had a situation where I felt like I was frustrated or it was like extremely uncomfortable um, and then I would try to kind of like take note of that, like for writing ideas, I try to put notes in my phone. Yeah. Um, initially, because I always have my phone, right? And then um, sometimes I can go back and think it's like, is this something universal that applies to other people? Sometimes it doesn't, and it doesn't work. But um, so I think, yeah, sometimes just paying attention to like, these things that feel both universal. And um, a lot of times it's sort of like frustrations or not knowing how to deal with something yeah. um, that feels like everyone or most parents go through. Um, I think finding those moments. It is a lot of times. It's funny that you say, you know, in the frustration, <clears throat> there's comedy because it's it's always been said that there is sadness in humor. Comedian, yeah. Comedians are like the saddest people, but right. they're really funny. So there's always kind of that marriage of kind of two emotions, isn't there? 
Yeah, there is. And it's interesting. I feel like I see that comment sometimes on certain pieces. Um, people <laughs> will be like, I'm not sure if I should laugh or cry, you know, because it's sort of like <laughs> both, right? Because you're like highlighting something that's, um, yeah. you know, a frustrating situation, but it's also hopefully giving you some comic relief. But it is interesting. I think they are, um, they are wrapped together. And I think humor and comedy is a way of sort of like making sense of things or working through things sometimes, you know. And did you, did you, when you were writing, did you ever feel like the book had to, um, how do I put this? The book had, ever had to solve anybody's questions? Because a lot of times I, you know, when you see parenting books out there, they're a little bit prescriptive. Even mm -hmm. if they aren't, me, I feel like they kind of box you in a little bit without meaning to. Did, mm -hmm. did you feel you had a duty to say to people well th this will work for you or do you like how do you keep it open-ended how do you kind of make somebody comfortable within that space right yeah I mean I, I think it is interesting because like it's so hard because like you know one book is probably not going to be like for everyone but um I think trying to think I did try to think outside my immediate experience you know um when I was writing it and you know, it's an interesting space because it's not, it's not like a straightforward prescriptive like advice book. Um, it's sort of, it's got humorous advice in it, but also satirical pieces that are just um, more, you know, for laughs, hopefully. Yeah. Um, but, um, but yeah, I did sort of try to keep that in mind when I was writing is like, I realize that a lot of people come to parenting from different spaces. Like some people are single parents. Um, some people have different racial or gender, gender identities than I do. Um, some people, you know, have a baby through pregnancy, some people adopt or have a surrogate. So I tried to just keep that in mind um, and tried to make the, you know, the sections of the book relevant. Some, certain chapters might only be relevant to people in certain situations, but tried to be aware of using sort of like, you know, gender neutral pronouns and um, situations that would apply more broadly than hopefully to just people just like me. Um, but at the same time, you know, obviously if you're really super extroverted, I don't know, <laughs> might not resonate with you. Do not. <laughs> but, but, yeah, um, but maybe it would, I think so. I think parts of it even, it's funny because I think the extrovert versus introvert thing, I think there are things that, you know, that there's common grounds and, yeah. um, well, and similar anxieties and concerns and stuff. So yeah. Fun. And then you do wonder if people tend to, assume that they are extroverted they might read this book and go actually i don't really like people all that much <laughs> yeah, right. yeah and it's interesting because i did in the intro i did try to cover sort of like because there are you know there's extroversion and introversion but then there's also like sort of shyness and social anxiety like there's all these different things so you might be extroverted but sort of shy um or yeah. people might think that you are one or the other but you really did not so uh, or some people are just more in the middle, you know, not yeah. like, or in certain situations, they're one way and not in the other. So, um, yeah, so it was interesting to try to like cover that. And and if, and maybe like, yeah, maybe who's to say if you're super extroverted, you might still like it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what? I think a lot of people can relate. And I hate, I don't want to date us. This yeah. Year, but this year <laughs> has taught people, I think, a lot about how they interact and how a lot of times they don't really want to. <laughs> Right. Yeah. It's funny. I've heard, I've had friends too, who I would assume are extroverted say like that actually this year has made them be like, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. Just stay I'm home. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like maybe, maybe I'm a little more. Involved. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Funny. So um, when we talk about on this show, when we talk about kind of the writing process and routine, mm -hmm. what's, uh, I think it, it's more interesting in a lot of ways if you have children and mm -hmm. you're about kind of parenthood, how do you carve out that time? Or is it kind of really tricky? Where how, where does the writing happen? Yeah, no, it is really tricky. And it's especially this year, it's extremely tricky this year. Um, so yeah, I mean, I always have these aspirations to be like the writer that writes every day, like gets up at 5am and writes every day. And I just have never been able to do it. So um, I don't have a super consistent like day to day schedule. A lot of times it is just fitting it in where I can. Um, you know, when my kids were in school, that used, 
they they're remote they're like learning remotely right now but when they were when it's not a pandemic um i would have like starting last year my youngest was in kindergarten so i would have that space um where at least the school day but i also have a teaching job so um so i think just for me it's about finding the pockets of time where you know with teaching sometimes certain times of the semester are less busy than others so trying to sort of ramp up and write more in those times um and then you know just finding the time in the day like sometimes it's like my kids are just watching a tv show at night and i'm you know go in another room and just try to work on something for a little bit um and then in terms of just i feel like i'm big on lists so i sort of try to set like things that i hope to get done for the week or whatever yeah. um and then you know get them in and sometimes that's on the weekend or um in the evenings or things like that when when my teaching job is more busy yeah. um and then you know try to not be just be realistic about it i mean i feel like some of the most helpful advice i've heard is just that a little bit each day can add up to a lot you know you like can write a couple hundred words a day and you'll eventually <laughs> have yeah. enough to write a book right yeah, yeah exactly I think, um, I think yeah. I think people are really well. I mean, I think writers are really hard on themselves, and they kind of they end up with the kind of the the tragedy of comparison, where they're you know sitting and looking at somebody else, going, "Well, they did two thousand words. How come I haven't? I'm a failure." And I think you know having uh, for me having children around provides a bit of forgiveness, and by that I mean life just gets shoved in my face and right. I have no control over it really. And like, and mm -hmm. I have to allow it because if I didn't have that constant interruption, I, I think I would be loathing my process even more. Is that like, it's a, like a really perverse thing. Yeah, no. And I think it's interesting. Like one thing I've thought of, I mean, it's, this doesn't make sense at all, but I have way less time to write than I did before kids, but I almost am more productive in some ways because you have these small chunks, right? So you're like, I only have this amount of time. I can't spend yes. it scrolling social media. Like I just have to like, yeah. like focus and do it. It's like the Jeopardy theme tune is playing. <laughs> yeah, you're like, and you're like at any moment, the school could call and someone's sick or you know, like whatever. I mean, this year it's been a whole other thing, but yeah, um, but yeah I think you sort of, Almost, there is something to that. Like the sometimes when you're more busy, you're more productive, even though it's strange. Yeah, but I think kids also. It's like, um, like you were saying, you know, it's a good distraction. Like I feel like pre kids, I was always just like in my mind, you know, dwelling on whatever thing, and um, they just pull you out of that, which I think is good for the creative yeah, process. Yeah, I think for me, yeah, I, that's exactly right. It's like you don't have the luxury of kind of kind of drifting off into your own kind of. Yeah. The room of one's own. Yeah, right. I, don't, I, I don't have any room of my own. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Just like wherever you can. Yeah. yeah exactly. um, so let's kind of we're going to veer towards a little bit from the kind of the publishing side. So okay. uh, Marissa and I, um, you know, when we were talking about kind of hu using humor to break open spaces that can be tricky to talk seriously about. Um, we read um, your McSweeney's piece called Living Through a Pandemic um, um, or Potty Training a Toddler, right. uh, which like, you know, and Marissa is kind of dealing with younger children. So for her, that really resonated because right. like, she, she did both at the same time in March. And yeah. um, she is very much someone who uses humor to communicate you know okay. yeah. um she often uses the phrase and this is what we talked about it's like if if i don't laugh i'm gonna cry you know so mm -hmm. yeah um, so do you i think you know we discussed that humor can make a connection on a subject um mm -hmm. rather than i think it's probably if you agree is that you think that's the best way to approach a subject is adding a little bit of humor does that diffuse things yeah, I think that it does. Um, you know, I think sometimes like people are more willing to read something or listen to something humorous um, rather than this sort of straight, straightforward thing. And I think it does, like you said, diffuse, um, this, you know, it kind of disarms people a little bit sometimes. Um, I mean, obviously there's various kinds of humor and some is, is more like harsh and some is more sneaky yeah. or whatever. Um, but I do think like, sometimes people will um, listen to something 
or hear a message, you know, in a different way if it's if it's got humor involved in it. Yeah. And I think it breaks tension, you know, um, even pieces that are serious, sometimes having a bit of humor in them um, yeah. helps just kind of like break the tension and um, it gives a different feel to, to different pieces. So I definitely think there is something to that. And in your book, what, um, what sections of your book do you think you needed to add a bit of humor because they were very earnest and very hard? And did your team agree with you? Yeah, so I mean, we did, it's, we it tried to weave sort of humor throughout the book, um, I think. So it's an interesting, it's an interesting um, sort of approach because it's a little bit of a hybrid. There are some sort of personal anecdotes from me and then sort of some like humorous advice, but that you could actually use. And then some of these satirical pieces that are just more straight humor. Um, so I think we tried to, I mean, really weave humor throughout it. So it's not, um, so it's sort of present in all of the places in the book. Um, but I think that humor is a way to sort of say things that you might not say, um, you know, in a moment, if someone at a, I don't know, parenting group tells you you're doing something wrong or something, you might not say, even though in your mind, you might be like, annoyed oh, with that person. But um, I think then I've I think, said yeah, those, I think I've probably said those things out loud, which is why I was never invited back. So yeah. <laughs> well, that's, see, that's good. <laughs> Everyone just in a different way. <laughs> I'm like so non-confrontational that I'm like, eh, just put that in my mind as something that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, now, when it comes to kind of representation uh, uh -huh. in parenting books, like the discussing of kind of parenting styles can be really polarizing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think, you know, writing in this space almost ensures you're going to, you might alienate some parents and then, you know, people won't agree with you. Um, right. And there's that book, um, How Not to um, F Them Up, I'm mm -hmm. not sure, but um, by Oliver James. Um, and there's a section where uh, he leaves no question that he's written this book with a certain kind of parent in mind. Mm -hmm. Middle class, privileged, you know, who have choices about parenting, whereas a lot of people don't have choices. So, um, but then it was when it was published, it made the readership for kind of parenting, mm -hmm. you know, for that certain kind of book kind of set in stone. And that kind of maybe that's more of what's promoted. Now, how do you approach a more, and you, you mentioned this a little bit, so let's kind of maybe delve deeper into it. Like, how mm -hmm. do you? so that it's more universal so that it's more inclusive mm -hmm. yeah I mean I think like I think I talked about this a little bit yeah but trying to just be aware of like not everyone shares my background or current situation um not everyone like had children the same way that I did so um I, like when I was writing the book I did kind of try to list out different you know not everyone had one baby at a time some people have twins or triplets um you know, there's just so many different ways to come into parenting. So I, when I was writing it, I did try to like list out different scenarios that people might be in and then sort of check myself against them um, that like, you know, trying to mention different situations in the book. And then, um, like I said, you know, using more like singular they or you type pronouns that are not like assuming yeah. someone's... Um, gender identity or situation. And, you know, I mean, I think um, there's a lot of different things to consider um, and yeah. just trying to keep that in mind, yeah. And was that more front of your mind or was it the, was it your agent and team and publisher or was it both on the same page? Or did you have to do a little bit of, hey guys, hang on, like let's make sure that we're kind of talking to everybody? Yeah, well, so I definitely had conversations with my agent about that. So we worked on the proposal over um, a fairly long period of time, just because I was working on building up my platform before we went out on submission. Um, and so we and and revisions and things. And that's something my agent and I talked about, because, I mean, I think one way to market the book would have been just to straight market it to mothers. Um, yeah. And we sort of talked about not doing that about keeping it more broad because not everyone identifies um, as a mother and there are other groups and things. Um, so we definitely had 
my agent and I definitely had conversations about that um, before we put it out on submission um, that we wanted it to be more inclusive. And she was definitely, I think she probably even prompted that conversation. So she was definitely on board with that. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, it's funny. That was one conversation we had around the title and stuff because certain titles would be, yeah. you know, more geared toward things. Um, so it, it seems like the, uh, um, the publisher, the team of the publisher has been open to that as well. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we're early in the process, but, um, it seems like, it seems like they've been fine with that. Um, you know, I know like the singular they thing, like sort of old school grammarians don't like it, but, um, they've, they've been fine with that sort of, That's um, great. That's great. Stuff. yeah. And did like, what, I mean, how do you, how do you feel that the book's marketing has been going? How do you, do you get involved in any of that or do you just kind of go, listen, I'll leave it to you guys? You know, it's funny. It's we're so early in the process that I feel like we haven't gotten into it a lot. Um, so it's kind of early for me to know. Um, but I know we will have more conversations down the line um, with like the marketing team. Um, so yeah, so it just feels like a little that, early. Do you like kind of? Do you want to be involved in that process, or are you are you somebody that just goes? No, that's you know, I don't have to. Yeah, well, it's interesting. I mean, so I have been like reading up and listening to podcast things just about book marketing myself, just because um, I know, you know, authors need to support their own um, yeah. book projects. And I think it's helpful to learn more about it and that sort of stuff. So I actually find it interesting. I'm not a person that I know some some writers are just like very resistant to any sort of any of that stuff. And I'm not, I, I actually find it sort of interesting. I mean, I am a little concerned about sometimes marketing or things taking over, um, you know, writing time, which I think a lot of creatives probably struggle with, but um, but I'm I'm open to it. And, and I am, yeah, like I do want to have some more conversations about them, um, with them about that sort of stuff as it gets closer. Yeah, it must, um, it must be really fascinating because it's a level of connection that mm -hmm. you either choose to kind of get involved with or not. And I, I think it is like a new skill that you are allowed to kind of learn. You can be brought in if you want to. I find that really fascinating, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And um, yeah, yeah, I just, it is really interesting. I think like all the sort of behind the scenes stuff that goes on with um, what, why someone buys a book is is interesting yeah. um yeah and there was a whole discussion about it on twitter actually the other day about there are lots of um very well-known authors who are very hands-off and i think that whether they they realize it or not i think being like that then translates into there's a like a slight disinterest mm -hmm. with, with the audience that put you there yeah you know? yeah for sure and it's interesting i mean I've seen this on Twitter too. Um, Twitter's so interesting, right? Um, <laughs> some people commenting that they'll see like a author they really admired at a conference or something, and and they're very standoffish or uninterested. And you know, I think to be fair, everybody has good and bad days and yeah. can't be on all the time. But like, I think that does sort of affect how you think about them and their work sometimes, um, or just like, yeah, um, how how willing you are to interact with readers or um that sort of thing yeah. you know and i think we're just in this world now especially with nonfiction, where platform is really important um and it's like you know i think authors taking on more of the sort of marketing stuff is is something that's happening and um yeah it's just it's just sort of part of where things are at right now and if you could before we go kind of get to the final questions if you uh -huh tell somebody or advise somebody not that you know everybody can kind of take everything with a pinch of salt but if you could tell a writer who's writing specifically kind of nonfiction about parenthood like what would you what would you tell them what kind of like you know advice about either process or industry like anything that would kind of help them do you think kind of navigate yeah um i mean i think that like parenting is such a huge um, market, you know, there, there are tons of markets, um, websites and publications for parenting. So I think the good news is that if it's something that you want to do, it's the barrier for entry is not like super impossible um, to get into. 
And so, yeah, I mean, I think like, I guess this goes for any kind of writing, but sort of studying the publications that you're interested in and reading them and getting a sense of what they're doing um, is a good way to sort of break into them and get into them. And then, I mean, as we've talked about, there are so many different, you know, parenting styles and opinions and things. So um, I think writing in the parenting space, like you can be a little tricky sometimes um, because people are not always happy with your opinions or whatever. Um, there are definitely like essays that blow up sometimes um, over someone saying something. So um, I think it's, it's, it's a good space to be writing in because it is, it's very active. There's a huge readership um, and there's a lot of different sort of angles on it yeah. and different places that appeal to different angles. So I think finding your, finding what works for you and what you want to write about um, within this larger sphere is yeah. helpful. I think that's at the granular level. That's probably the most important thing that kind of is a thread that goes through any, anyone who's a writer. If you write something that you absolutely are passionate about and love, mm -hmm. that's the thing you need to be doing. And I think, you know, it's really tempting when the market is so saturated for somebody mm -hmm. to probably sit down and go, I'm going to write a parenting book because Look at all like look at I'm yeah. next to those people, but right. just if if that's not your voice, then you can't mm -hmm. do that. But if you're really passionate about something like that, I think definitely you know there's space, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I think you're right. Like I guess with anything, it's like sometimes it's tempting to try to read the tea leaves of the market, right? Be like, yeah. this, this is it. but I'm it gonna is. Start, I'm going to start writing erotica. Like, <laughs> I know. Oh, 50, yeah, I'm going to write the next. <laughs> Um, but like, it's, tr it's tricky too. It's a double-edged sword because like, because there are so many people writing in the parenting space and there are these huge like social media influencers that are, you know, parenting and stuff. It's like, it's hard to, com you know, compete with that. Um, I think, but I think there are also opportunities to just like carve out your own sort of, um, voice and space too. Definitely. Right. So we're going to head towards the, the, uh, last few questions. Um, okay. so Totally not related to anything. If you could do anything else, <laughs> if you could do uh -huh. anything else but uh, be a writer and an author, what would you want to do for work? Yeah, so it's funny because there's sort of some writing adjacent things, but like the, it's completely outside the writing world. I'm always fascinated by sort of like chefs, like the world of being a chef and like, you know, yeah. something in the culinary world. I feel like I don't know if the reality of it would actually <laughs> be what I sort of imagine it being, yeah. but, um, but I feel like it's like creative and interesting. Yeah. And um, I really love like Top Chef and stuff like watching shows like that. So I feel like that has been sort of a, like, that would be an interesting thing I, to do. I wonder if that's because you like the process of something. You know how earlier you were saying that you're actually quite fascinated by kind of book marketing and kind of you're listening to, I just wonder if you just kind of like learning how to build something, put something together. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think so. And um, yeah, just seeing like how something comes together and putting your own spin on it. Um, I think, yeah, I think it's interesting. Yeah. And obviously just being able to make like amazing food would be great. I know, yeah, um, my husband and I have been watching um, Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat. Oh yeah. And I love the book. And when I saw it on Netflix, I'm like, oh, oh. yeah, I know. I've watched oh, a few of those too, yeah. Good. It's so good. She is yeah. so I love her. Yeah, she's great, yeah. Um, and she has like a, yeah, I've read some of just her essays and other things too. and. Yeah, she ha her story is really interesting too. Yeah, so. she has this kind of lust for experience, and yeah. comes across in her writing the way she and like in the Netflix show, it's just amazing because she just approaches everything with like both hands. It's yeah, just yeah, uh, it's wonderful. She's yeah, then I know. Yeah, she's great. So yeah, you should watch that. <laughs> I know. I'll watch more of them. I've watched a couple, and I need to watch more. Yeah, it's good. Um. So is there something, if there's something that you could change about the industry, if you could snap your fingers and it's not, you know, it's not, doesn't mean that the industry is broken or anything, but if there's something that you think that would help mm -hmm. in some way, what would you change if you could? I mean, this is a broad answer, but I just think transparency. Um, I think a lot of the, book publishing process and industry is kind of mysterious. Yeah. Um, 
And I think it's getting better. I think people are um, doing more to sort of try to explain what goes on. Um, I saw you guys had Courtney mom on her book. Um, her book is great about, you know, before and after the book deal. Yeah. Before and after the book deal. yeah um, just explaining that. And I think there are resources out there with like, you know, that like a podcast or a, a web page or something that explains some things, but it's not centralized and it's not like super no. easy to find. So I think, um, I think just knowing more about like this behind the scenes stuff and which this is great because this is part of it too. Um, this show, I think just like making, making it, I think people just have these ideas about what publishing a book is like and what's going to happen and, um, how many copies you're going to sell and everything. But, um, I think like the reality or what it, what it means to be on the New York times with bestseller list or something like that. You know, I think just any um, sort of transparency stuff about that. And it's, you know what? I mean, um, it's been like that for so long. Yeah. And we have so many people that ask us all the time, like, or the assumption is, Oh, you win an award, you've made it, or you've, you know, you have a movie. Like we've had people on that, have, whose books have been made into movies and right. it's not at all glamorous or star studded. I mean, it's interesting obviously, but it's not like you publish a book and you see a big fat check like the next right. day. So, yeah. you know, and working with sometimes you get an agent, but that doesn't mean you've made it because your book might not sell. So yeah. the, the amount uh, without, you know, and I'm not saying this to disparage the industry obviously, but I think it's really interesting that, the door remains closed a lot of the time because I think the industry likes when people aspire to be a part of it. So mm -hmm. all, it's a, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a circle really that keeps going on and on. And I think mm -hmm. having these chats with the real people behind right. the writing who are saying, Oh, actually my first book was awful. I didn't right. publish until my fourth book, you know, like all of yeah. that is so helpful because it just, I don't know. I think it just kind of makes it more approachable. I think it just helps. Yeah. Well, actually, it's not so scary. I'm going to try it because what's the worst that could happen? If, yeah. I, if I get, if, if you know, 15, 20 agents say no to me, mm -hmm. it do, it's not anything personal. It's the job that they're having to do. But at least I'm glad that I reached out, you know. Right. Yeah, for sure. And it's so interesting because I think one thing I've kind of, realized more recently too is like even if you are the person who gets the sort of like huge book deal and all this stuff happening there's this like incredible amount of stress and pressure oh yeah that comes along with that so like i'm not even sure that that's <laughs> you know they're like that's the dream for a lot of people but then it's like well is that really you know no. what, what you want either there's just this different like I was at a conference last summer and someone mentioned that they knew someone who had a huge book and he said no moment of it has been enjoyable because it's just been so stressful, you know, which is yeah. like sort of, you know, shocking to realize. But, you know, what's been interesting is that the people that we've spoken to so far, whether it's agents, authors, editors, it's all a very flat line experience. And right. by that, I mean, it's not it's not that and I don't mean to say that as if like somebody isn't appreciative or excited. There's excitement, but it's not the excitement that you imagine in your head. Right. It's like, okay, this is done, next step. What's the next mm -hmm. step? It's all very kind of linear. There's no jet right. coming to pick you up to take you to, right. to for a film festival. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? Um, yeah. you know, it's, it's but, but I, I personally find that bit really fascinating. So yeah. you earlier talking about you write what you love. Mm -hmm. I absolutely, Nurse and I love doing this. And we, we talked about this for ages. I'm like, it would be so amazing to understand what goes into the process. Right, yeah. Uh, the finished product is great, but how long did it take to get there and what did you have to do? Yeah. Yeah, for sure, yeah. So I love that you all are doing this because, yeah, I find it really fascinating too, so. <laughs> um, and then the final question, because mm -hmm. I just, I, lo I love this kind of question, is what would be your desert island book? You're only allowed one. I'm only allowed one. Um, other than like, you know, how to survive on a desert <laughs> island. Um, but, um, I knew you. Was <laughs> no, but probably like, um, 
I don't know. It's a tough question. I, I feel like maybe something comforting, at just like a comfort a comfort classic read, maybe like a Jane Austen, like, you know, Pride and Prejudice or something that's um, sort of comforting and then, you know, transports you <laughs> to a different place so that you can I read. Thought, I, I thought you'd say cookbook. You'd be like... Oh, yeah. That would be good, too. That's a good like idea. Desert Island cooking. I know, right? <laughs> How to cook. <laughs> How to cook that? I don't know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, oh my goodness, Julie, it's been an absolute joy having you on here. Yeah. Fun. Thank you so much for having me. It's been so fun for me too. Thanks for okay. asking me. Now, uh, tell people where they can find you. Okay, sure. So my website is um, julievick.com and you can get to um, my social media and stuff from there. I'm probably most active on Twitter, which is uh, Vic Julie and Instagram, which is Julie Vic Writer. Um, so those are probably the main spots. Perfect. Again, your book is coming out next year. Uh, what what month again? August. It's supposed to be August. August. Currently. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll see. Um, well, I mean, I can't wait to get my hands on it. Um, it's been great having you on here. And thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. Bye. Bye. Um, thank you so much, everyone who's been tuning in. Um, that was a lot of fun. And it was the first time I think, you know, because I talk about parenthood a lot with my friends, with authors, with editors. And this is the first time where we kind of got a glimpse of the behind the scenes of what it takes to kind of carve out time to write a parenting book, but also how to just make something really accessible to everyone. So it's not just one path um, and everybody could take a lot out of this book, I think. So um, remember, we are on every Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. So um, make sure to click the link below to subscribe uh, to be alerted ahead of every episode. And um, it's been great having you guys here. See you next week. <laughs>